I am joined right now by Chief Jason Thody with the Hartford Police Department. Chief Thody, a lot has been going on over the past couple of weeks between the shooting of the three-year-old and then a couple hours later, the shooting of the 16-year-old. And then yesterday, uh, the verdicts coming down about former police officer Derek Chauvin. We have a lot to talk about today. Uh, but first off, I want to talk about the arrest when it comes to the uh, three-year-old that was shot and killed. Uh, on Nelson Street. Do you have any updates for us? I do. Um, so uh, as we know, uh, over the weekend, over this last weekend, uh, the detectives were able to establish probable cause to make an arrest on the shooter. Um, the, uh, the shooter in that case, 19-year-old uh, uh, Josiah Smith, um, the warrant got signed uh, on Saturday for us and we were able to pick him up on Monday morning. Um, so that uh, was the, the kind of first break in the case. And then um, Last night and yesterday, they were able to establish probable cause to, to complete an arrest warrant for the driver of the stolen Honda Accord, um, where Josiah Smith was the, uh, the rear seat passenger in when the shooting occurred. Uh, we were able to pick that individual up this morning. Um, the individual is a juvenile, uh, so I, I can't release the name, uh, but the charges are accessory to commit murder um, and larceny uh, in second degree for being in possession of a stolen car. He was picked up this morning and he is currently being being processed as we speak. Now, uh, do you have any update when it comes to uh, the shooting of and the killing of the 16 year old on Magnolia Street just a few hours later? Mari Preston, um, no, uh, we don't have an update at this point. Um, you know, these these cases are, are coming together kind of a, a little at a time here. And, uh, you know, as, as we can see, the detectives are making great progress and they're making arrests, but we don't have anything new that we can release as of right now for the Magnolia Street homicide. Now, when you talk about cases being connected, that doesn't necessarily mean, I think a lot of people put it in their minds as that means a person, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Correct. I mean, in this particular case, I think a lot of people... Um, you know, jump to conclusions. And that's what we tried to avoid uh, by being very deliberate about what we were saying and what we were releasing. Uh, again, we believe that these two uh, homicides, the Nelson Street and the Magnolia Street homicides have connections. Um, but there was a lot of speculation about, you know, the who the shooter was and things like that. As we know now, uh, we've made an arrest in that case, uh, as far as who the shooter was. Um, and, and so while we do still have strong information that connects these two cases. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't always mean that it's in a shooter or in a particular person. Um, it could be in, uh, you know, in groups or it could be in vehicles that are involved. It could be a lot of things. Uh, and that is still stuff that the detectives are piecing together. I know you have a lot on your hands right now. Um, yesterday, former police officer Derek Chauvin was charged uh, and he was, the verdict had come out that he was charged on all three counts. How as a department, how difficult is getting news like this and what impact does this kind of have to the morale of a police department the size like Hartford? So I don't, th this particular one, I, I don't think it's difficult. Uh, I think we all knew from the onset when that video came out, um, I think we were uh, all kind of united as human beings that that was, uh, that that was wrong. Um, there wasn't, you know, when you get, when you get use of force incidents or police involved shootings that are, uh, that can be kind of looked at in different ways. Um, and it can be, um, it can be debated whether the, you know, the officer was in danger or whether a third person was in danger, whether the shooting was appropriate, not appropriate, whether the use of force was appropriate or not appropriate. That's one thing. And that prompts discussions. And, you know, if the police department and, and police officers feel, um, you know, that officers are being treated in a certain way, that can have an impact on morale. In the George Floyd case, uh, you know, as people, we all looked at that and, and watched, um, you know, watched a human being, uh, you know, watched the life drained out of a human being over the course of, of nine minutes or so. Um, and, and that was just despicable. Uh, I don't think it matters whether you wear a uniform or not, or whether you're a police officer or not. Um, you know, I, I don't think that it, it had an impact on morale. As we saw throughout the protests, I think our officers took a stance um, that rightfully people were frustrated, wanted to be heard, um, and our officers actually wanted to facilitate that. Uh, you know, at the end of the year, we looked at, you know, the protest activity. We had 199 protests in the city. We made two arrests. 
um, you know, I think, I think that um, officers, uh, politicians, uh, you know, media, I think at, at, with George Floyd, I think everybody was on the same side and, and we, all, we all knew that that was completely wrong and that there was no excuse for it. And I think the verdict was a just one. Now, I know that a lot of people in the community, a lot of community activists, uh, a lot of politicians are saying that change needs to happen. They keep talking about all of this change. Um, I know Hartford and the state of Connecticut, a lot of the departments pride themselves on transparency and, uh, and being one with the community. How important is it for you, Chief, to have a department of people that really are community members, not only just officers? I think it's very important. Uh, you know, we're not, there's not a large percentage of, of, you know, police officers here in Hartford that live here in Hartford. Uh, and that's something that law enforcement struggles with across the country. Um, you know, we, we struggle, uh, especially in urban environments to reflect the community and racial makeup and, um, you know, and, and that, that transcends into religion and gender and uh, you know sexual orientation and and so you want a police department that polices a community that um, you know that reflects the community uh, not in any just not not in one category but in all categories and it's and it's difficult uh, to it's difficult to do that but uh, you know for example I, I wasn't born you know in Hartford uh, I came here because I very intentionally wanted to do the work of of an urban police officer, of problem solving and uh, having an impact. And I didn't see the ability to do that in some of the smaller suburban communities. I thought I saw the ability to do that, um, you know, in a city like Hartford. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think a lot of our officers, even though they, they're not necessarily born and raised here, um, they come here and they quickly become a member of the community. They quickly integrate, they quickly develop relationships. And, uh, you know, I hear about it every day. Um, you know, that's, that's not to say that we, you know, we don't have incidents where you, you have somebody that that's not doing the right thing. Um, that that's, uh, um, you know, that's, that makes a mistake or that, you know, or that maybe doesn't belong here. And that's why we try to use the discipline process and, you know, keep the good ones here and make sure that, uh, you, you know, that, that any officer we find out that that's not doing things the way we want them to do them or not doing the right thing that, that they're not, they're not wearing the patch and the badge anymore. And how difficult um, has it been since all of this happened, all of the George Floyd incident, even from that day on, I know a lot of protests happened and a lot of people kind of had this negative shadow put on the way that they look at police. Has it been difficult gaining trust back? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think the timing of it uh, was horrible. Uh, we had just really... Um, settled into a, a COVID world, uh, a pandemic, where, um, you know, normally if something like this happens, something like George Floyd happens, you have, you know, you get out there and you, and you make it known that, that you're not behind that, that that's not what the Hartford Police Department represents, that's not what policing represents, that, um, you know, that that's not the way we do things. Um, hard to do that in a pandemic where you, you're, you know, you can't, meet with people, you know, in the beginning when, when George Floyd first happened, this Zoom thing wasn't uh, all that popular. Uh, it didn't, you know, it progressed over time uh, as we sit here now on Zoom, um, but it was very difficult to go out there and interact with people and get the message out. We had to use social media uh, quite a bit, um, uh, but it was, it was hard. Um, but we built, you know, relationships with, with, you know, some of the protest groups that were here, uh, we, we were out there with a united voice uh, saying that we didn't stand for it either, um, that we stood for change and we invited um, some groups in to work on some policy, to open the doors to our training, to show people how we train to make sure um, that things like that don't happen here. Um, you know, is it, a, is it a perfect system? It's not, but um, you know, it's it was an opportunity, I think, uh, for us to engage with our community here uh, based on something that happened, you know, thousands of miles away um, and, uh, and, and try to make, try to, to, to build a foundation here in Hartford. Um, and, and I think it, I think it uh, you know, to, 
I think it was a light at the end of the tunnel where we were able to open up dialogue, you know, especially in the last week or two as this trial progressed. Um, you know, had a lot of conversations with people uh, that I built relationships with during the protests. Um, so I, I think it was, uh, uh, you know, if there is a, a positive that came out of this, it did open a lot of doors for the community and for police departments to get to get better and to and to, you know, enhance those those relationships. And I think, like you said, now people uh, and like a lot of community members said, uh, now is a time now that uh, Chauvin has been convicted and um, he'll he'll face sentencing in a few weeks. I think this is a time that people really see it's kind of a springboard for change. Um, I think a lot of people were concerned if he was going to actually be guilty of all three charges. And I think this is a really good opportunity for departments. Um, to, to really voice and talk with community members about accountability, about transparency. Uh, and I think Hartford's doing a really good job. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I agree. I mean, I think accountability is what, is, the, is what fosters change. If you're not holding people accountable, nothing will change. They will, you know, they will continue to see things happen. Um, they, will they will continue to see the same outcome. And no one's ever driven to change at that point. Um, you know, I think this was a huge step to show um, that the justice process can work. This was a test not only for law enforcement, but it was a test for the, the court systems and the justice system to make sure that accountability touches everybody. Just because you wear a gun and a badge doesn't mean that, that accountability will skip over you. Uh, in this case, um, you know, I think justice was done. Perfect. I thank you for your time. Uh, I know that you have a lot of work to do, you guys. Uh, never skip a beat. You guys are always very busy, but I thank you for your time. Um, and that was Chief Doty right here with the Hartford Police Department. Appreciate all that you guys are doing out there to keep everybody safe. Thank you very much. Thanks.